what units gain veterancy the fastest and which units are the best with it. To prevent this video from being 8,000 hours long, I will only be going over the units that appear late game. This includes the Spartan Trio, Covenant Leaders, Scorpion Tanks, Wolverines, Cobras, and Scarabs. I will gladly elaborate more on why I think the aforementioned subjects are the best when started up in a part 2 of this guide. We'll see how this video does. You guys cleanse the hell out of my expectations. As promised, part 2 has been, researched. If you have not seen part 1 I highly advise you stop right here. Click on the link which is located in the description, get the context then come back. Consider this video being the continuation of chapter 5 along with a few things I've overlooked. If anyone is wondering why I'm using the AI gods to talk is because my voice is killing me, hopefully it's not too jarring. With the formalities out of the way, let us begin. As I've shown earlier, in the 5th, Technically 6th chapter I briefly go over which units are the best with veterancy, so as to not make the video too long, mentioning Spartans, Covenant Leaders, Scorpions, Cobras, Wolverines and Scarabs being the only units of worth with stars anyway. While the gloss over was passable, it still leaves much to be desired, therefore I will elaborate as to why I think these fellows are the best when fully veteranized. Improved. Going back to the previous question posed in the last video, which units are the best with veterancy? I said the UNSC have the overall edge with stars thanks to their three special units, Spartans. As I mentioned before, the veterancy cap for all units, excluding Spartan commandeered vehicles is 3. Once the Spartan is in said vehicle that cap is increased to 13, for the most part. To provide further clarification while we're on the subject of Spartans, I will be answering a question presented by user, Protogens54, in which they asked, quote, How do you get 13 star Spartan tanks, when you can only get 3 stars per unit? Whether or not you believe this comment to be trolling, please keep in mind, there are people who think having a certain number of tanks out at a certain time before 10 mins is cheating. I will treat this as a genuine question and show you by example. For those who are complex 4 runner A, I and already know, here's a timestamp to skip to. Back to the question at hand, like I said in the comment, Proto you technically answered your own question, the 3 stars per unit also includes the Spartan having 3 stars as well. Emphasis on the Spartan and unit together being fully upgraded. I don't blame you asking another question. A 3 star Spartan and 3 star unit doesn't automatically mean 13 stars. I'm referring to the amount of upgrades the Spartan and unit has respectively. For example, a 3 star Spartan and power turret tank with no stars together leaves you with a 10 star tank. But if for some strange reason you have a fully upgraded 3-star Spartan amp, a 3-star canny tank, it'll be 12 stars. Hopefully that clarifies it. Now on to why these units are the best with stars. Spartans. Individually Spartans aren't exactly like their lore counterparts. It's their synergy with other units that makes them a true menace on the battlefield. Spartans are classified as infantry making their XP values needed to gain stars much lower than a tank trying to do the same thing. However considering their special units it's still a bit higher than marines. For one star it requires 24 XP, two is 60 XP and so on. If you've ever noticed, whenever you put an unupgraded Spartan in an unupgraded vehicle you will automatically receive two stars showing up on the Spartan icon. The amount of stars will change depending on the current upgrades present on the Spartan and vehicle. For example, researching chain gun while in a Tech 1 tank results in a 3-star Spartan tank, while a Spartan laser and power turret tank combined gives you 7 stars. Keep in mind, once a Spartan takes control of a vehicle it will level up in accordance to the Spartan's veterancy rate, not the original vehicle. Making it the host by definition since when you select the unit, you hear the Spartan voice line subbing in for the vehicle it happens to be in. The veterancy multiplier stacks like normal until you reach 13 to 14 stars. If you're able to get three 13 starred units, Menace has been researched. Yes! Yes! Don't get cocky, overwhelming numbers can still mess you up.
emotionally more than physically. You can only get 14 stars when you upgrade a 13 star power turret tank to a grizzly and a 13 star hornet to hawk, respectively. Grizzly research. What makes the Spartans even deadlier is the fact you can have three of them. The units that best go with Spartans when fully veteranized are the Scorpion, Wolverine, and Cobra in that order. So as to not overlook the effort Turnip put in his Halo Wars unit guide, I'll put this in concise words to the best of my ability. Scorpions have very good mobility and damage on their own. Make it a 13 star and having three of them will make your opponents want to resign. You'll have the highest chance of getting away should you find yourself in unfavorable conditions while punishing their forces for trying to chase you. Play your cards right and you can spearhead your way out of 1 Vol 2 and in rare cases even 1 Vol 3 scenarios, though this will depend on both you and your adversary's leader composition regardless. Wolverines have great air damage and decent ground capabilities when using volley not to mention good ground speed. Magnify its power by 3 13 stars and the enemy will be at the bare minimum annoyed when they see it. Your chances of getting away are pretty good. Overwhelming air numbers would find it difficult to surround you, giving you enough time to regroup should trouble find you, whereas ground units might put you in a tough spot. Be mindful and you'll keep the X-Men alive. I personally would say having only one Spartan Wolverine is fine and you're better off using the other two for tanks and the unit up next. Don't expect to beat armies of opposing tanks with these guys. Air, however, no sweat. Cobras have very high vehicle damage, especially at 13 stars but very low mobility and cannot shoot air units, while you may be able to destroy bases faster than tanks. So if you get surrounded by hunters or air, be sure to have therapy researching. You'll have the lowest chances of getting away considering you have to lock down, thus being stationary to inflict damage, then unlock to move 10 miles per hour away from danger. Pray you have a Covenant teammate with engineers watching over you. Not to mention while locking down you give the opponent time within that window to do as they please. Just like the Wolverine it's good to have one in in the case of Cobra's two max. Yo, what about the Grizzly and Hawk? Can't forget about the Grizzly and Hawk. The Grizzly on its own is slightly weaker than its power turret brother in terms of damage referring to its canister shell fire. Its health, however, is a different story. Should you be forged, the strat would be to get 13 stars with your Spartan tanks as normal, then get the Grizzly upgrade. The advantages of the Scorpion such as mobility carry over to the Grizzly. The additional health of its upgrade increases the unit's survivability just a bit above the 13-star Scorpion. For the Hawk, while its damage is amazing, the reason why I don't mention it is because your 14-star Hawks can be stasis Cryo-bombed, meaning potentially one-shotted. And anti-aired to death. Hawks don't have as much health to bank on and have too many factors that put your three-star Spartans at risk of dying. An honorable mention goes to the 15-star Wraith in deathmatch only.
That thing scares me. Covenant, for better or worse, aren't like their UNSC counterparts. The only units that can use their stars effectively are the leaders and scarabs, so let's talk about it. The Prophet, Arbiter, and Brute Chieftain are all solid options in their own right, which made deciding on what was the best three-star unit tough. This section here will be opinionated, so feel free to give your own thoughts as to who you might think the best three-star Covenant leader is. When it comes to veterancy on Covenant leaders, their effectiveness comes down to two variables. One, the individual player, and two, the situation the leaders find themselves in. With these two variables in mind, I personally think the Prophet is the weakest of the trio. Before Turnip cleanses me down with a 100-star Prophet, let me explain. The Prophet is the weakest of the trio due to him being the easiest three-star unit to shut down. With one vampire using stasis drain and a D-bomb, he's literally out of commission if it happens behind enemy lines. However, should the entire enemy be UNSC, then regret will be all the adversary knows. But the second there's one covenant you're treading on thin ice and have to keep a mental note of how far you're willing to risk it. The wishy-washy fluctuation of the Prophet's viability is why I think he's not the best three-star covenant unit compared to the other two, but man, it is very rewarding getting him to three-star. One advantage I will say is at least he won't get cannied by 13-star tanks. Now to research personal bias. The Arbiter is second and first at the same time, what makes surely here second is mainly due. To him falling off when there's too many scorpions, this in tandem with rage glitching can lead to actual rage moments, if you're not careful since more experienced players will simply wait for the right time to combo D-bomb canny. So A. Slight weakness to triple UNSC combos, but at least there's no stasis from a Wolverine to worry about. Though what makes him first is the competitive viability he has towards getting two stars the fastest. Yes, you heard that right RB is the fastest unit you can gain veterancy with period. He's the only leader unit that can get stars from using the Y ability unlike the Brute and Prophet. Eat your hearts out Brute and Prof cause he can move even faster with the Rage Glitch and save a tad bit of resources while doing it. Combine that with Ghastly Vision and you have one hell of a menace to deal with just watch out for Spartan tanks. And number one goes to the Brute Chieftain, he has more health than the Arbiter at the very least and can benefit the most from having a cloud of engineers healing him while attacking making him a mini scarab boss that can pull your favorite tank away and stun it forever unless interrupted. If the Arbiter could pull over a unit and stun it, he would be first, but he ain't doing that. Still, like the Arbiter, watch out for Spartan tanks and don't get surrounded. Scarabs are the only Covenant unit besides the leaders worth getting stars for. This is thanks to them having the highest base health and attack stats in the game. The upsides to a Scarab is its aforementioned high damage. The unit by itself can impact ally and enemy team decision making. You can force entire armies to focus fire you, while your teammates swoop in and do damage from another angle, and single-handedly spearhead assaults when done right. This can only be maximized when putting a scarab on impassable terrain such as a cliff. Maps such as Frozen Valley and Glacial Ravine is where this unit truly shines. With such a unit its weaknesses however are magnified. If you think you can just send the scarab in by itself, you are dead wrong. You're not going to get any stars if you have zero sense of self-preservation. That's with anything but the Scarab really tests that. The downsides are needing a life support system of at least 20 engineers, 3-star Brute Chieftain's Vortex, Max Pop Sacrifice Banshees, 1 Cutter or more, 1 Anders or more. Energy walls, poor positioning, spinning in circles, stupidity Anders-Cutter combo, high star Spartan tanks, getting surrounded by everything, useless teammates, god-tier enemies and resigning just to name a few minor setbacks. Is it still one of the best units in the game with three stars? Yes, yes it is, if you're able to get a three-star Scarab. It's pretty tough to kill however as I said earlier smarter players who are Cutter for example. We'll simply wait till your prized possession reached a certain HP threshold, then proceed to leader power the thing when they're confident you cannot make it in time. Fun fact I've lost many one-star Scarabs because of this. You just need to understand what maps work best for scarabs. Assess what combos you can best handle, then go from there. It took me a while to get to where I am with this knowledge, and I'm not even the best player. Friendly reminder. Despite everything I said, having stars will not work on opponents that hold a massive skill gap over you, which is why you tend to not see starred units much in high-level games. Please keep that in mind. Now onto the questions and what I missed. It's thanks to everyone who watched the video, along with the comment section, that made part 2 possible in the first place. I've been scrolling through the comments and I found a few questions and statements intriguing to put in. Let's get started. First question, what's the deal with 13 stars? I wanted to showcase this earlier but I forgot. 
This is what happens if you are an opponent research menace to society. The deal with 13 stars is, simply put, they do a shit ton of damage. Three 13 star tanks are an entire army by themselves. In these examples shown on screen you can see how quickly they obliterate UNSC and Covenant bases alike. Covenant bases suffer the most due to them being able to be canny glitched. Imagine if these bad boys had an army backing them up. Of course this will vary depending on the units, this is why I said the 13 star tanks are the most effective when fully veteranized. Question 2. Do you get more XP taking down starred units? Good question, I never gave it any thought so here we go. I tested this on a 3v3 map, Fort Dean. 2v2 map Beasley's Plateau, and on a 1v1 map, Blood Gulch. Fort Dean has 1 star Rebels, Plateau has 3 star Rebels, You're a fucking idiot. and Blood Gulch has 1 star Rebels. As you see on screen, Rebels with no star or 3 star are all yeah. worth 4 points. It can be safe to say you do not gain more XP taking down starred units. It would no. be interesting, if this was the case, would make taking down high starred units more rewarding, but oh well. Question 3 Do Covenant leaders gain veterancy from using their leader powers? While I did answer this earlier in the video, I've got no problem showing this again. In this example, I will use the profit on 14. I will cleanse to the best of my ability everything I see. What you see for the profit is the same thing for the brute, hence why I will not be showcasing the brute. I took out the whole map using the beam, and I did not get a star, meanwhile surely got one using his Y ability. So to answer the question, the Prophet and Brute Chieftain do not gain veterancy with their cleansing beam and vortex respectively. Honestly, I wish the other two would benefit from it as well. I don't see why not. And there you have it. Hopefully these videos provided more insight on veterancy. In the future I'll make a miscellaneous video on obscure things like the 6 star ODST squad. We'll see about that. 
Thanks to everyone who made it this far and to those who helped me in the previous video. I will be working on more Halo Wars related guides and other games, if there's a demand for it. The next project I will be working on is my thoughts on the Halo Wars Leader Overhaul mod. In the meantime, there will be Super Turtle videos and Halo MCC related content inbound, along with my bi-weekly uploading schedule. See you on the flip side. Anti-Wave out.